Yes, good morning, children. So, in continuation of the chapter, the birth. First, let us uh, see like what we have already done. So, theme and all we discussed yesterday. So, in the beginning, we read that Dr. Andrew Manson. He reaches home late evening, and at that time, he is almost exhausted. Why was he so exhausted? Why was he dead tired? There were two reasons. Uh, physically, because he was like uh, the one who had spent his whole day with Dr. Edward Page as his assistant in his clinic. And the second thing, like he, even emotionally, he was like spent because he had spent his evening with his beloved Christine, and there he had a uh, little, you can say, dispute over some reason, over some fact with her. So when uh, this kind of person has a, has a dispute with the one who he loves the most. So then emotionally, the person gets disturbed. So emotionally, he is, you know, exhausted. Physically, he's exhausted. And at that kind of stage, he reaches his home almost uh, at midnight. Okay, it was going to be about 12 o'clock when he reaches home. Uh, of course, at that time, only one thing he might have desired, that is sleep. So he, when he reaches home, uh, he didn't even have uh, opened up the gate of his room, uh, of his house. When he found Joe Morgan waiting for him at the gate. So Joe Morgan told him that his wife is expecting and uh, they were expecting a child after 20 years of their marriage. So the child was very important. And secondly, it was, a pre it was going to be a premature delivery. So Joe Morgan told this doctor, like his wife only uh, has faith upon this Dr. Andrew Manson. So Suzanne Morgan only wanted that Andrew Manson should take this case. And moreover, Joe Morgan also had full faith upon this very doctor only. And he told him to come to, come to his house. So Joe, Andrew Manson could not say no, because as a doctor also, whenever you get a call like this, you cannot uh, uh, say no. So he also gets ready and starts walking, starts going towards his house. So when he reaches home, Joe Morgan stops on the way. He doesn't enter the house and he tells, he deposes his full faith upon this doctor and tells him that he was sure that uh, Dr. Andrew Manson would do his best. So Dr. Andrew Manson goes inside and he observes and he uh, examines the patient that is Suzanne Morgan, who was expecting a child. And uh, he was able to make out like uh, the case was critical. Why the case was critical? Because uh, there might have been some medical reason. And moreover, uh, it was going to be a premature delivery. And premature deliveries are not at all good for the children especially. Okay. And in this case, we will read that uh, after the delivery would take place. And then mother also, even her condition would become a little critical. So it will be like uh, Dr. Andrew Manson's um, willpower or his, you can say, knowledge or it, it would be his determination which would help him save uh, both mother and child. So when he finds that uh, Suzanne Morgan, uh, you know, her condition was not very fine. And moreover, there was still some time for the delivery to take place. Uh, he wanted, uh, he felt like as if he might go home, but that is not clear. But uh, Suzanne Morgan's mother, you know, she was there and midwife was also there. So Suzanne Morgan's mother felt that Andrew Manson should not go home uh, because it's like, uh, it's very natural that the patient's relatives, they are more concerned about the well-being of the patient. So her concern was that Dr. Andrew Manson should not go home and should stay there only uh, so that whenever the doctor would be required, he should be there. So Dr. Andrew Manson, when he was offered a cup of tea by a mother, he assured her that he would not run away. So at that time, uh, he was having a cup of tea and uh, then he was, you know, uh, again, he went to see the mother, expecting mother, and found that still there was some time for the delivery to take place. Then he was sitting the fire, by fireside in the kitchen and there, uh, uh, otherwise it was pin drop silence. Only uh, three sounds were audible. One was the sound of the fire. Another one was the sound of the tick-tock of the clock. And third sound was of the footsteps of Joe Morgan. Okay, Joe Morgan's footsteps, the, uh, the sound of these footsteps of Joe Morgan also indicate 
like how tense he was like how important it was for him that the child uh, should be born uh, fine and even the mother should stay safe so the doctor was able to make out all these things and uh, he was sitting by the fireside meanwhile the, there was some time for the delivery to take place right so then the time came when the delivery had to take place it was almost morning when the child was born so the delivery took place and the child was born but what was very very unpleasant thing about the thing because it was a stillborn child so this much we had read that it was a stillborn child so from here we'll be continuing now so so here let's start from page number 67 now so the, though we had read this paragraph also we are going to repeat it and are elapsed it was a long harsh struggle then as the first streaks of dawn spread past the broken edges of the blind the child was born lifeless so with the break of the day the child was born but it was lifeless as he gazed at the still form a shiver of horror passed over andrew after all that he had promised after all uh, that he had promised his face heated with his own exertions chilled suddenly he hesitated torn between his desire to attempt to resuscitate the child and his obligation towards the mother who was herself in a desperate state so when he saw the still born child he could not uh, believe it because it was not that he had promised to the family so then he was like torn between his desire then he was like in a dilemma like whether he should revive the child or should he attend the mother who was in a desperate state whose condition was very critical so he was in a moral dilemma as to whether he should attend the uh, mother the one whose condition had become quite critical or should he try to revive the child who was almost dead as a doctor what would you decide for if you have to save uh, between mother and a newborn child who is almost dead what will you do first yes what will you say children what will you do navkirat singh shreya give the answer shreya if you don't know the answer if you did not listen to the question never mind at least you know yes himanshu says else like we will save the mother first that's correct himanshu correct answer so himanshu very well done because you are not only attentive you are sincere also okay so the point is shreya please be attentive now all of you so he had been he was like uh, in a dilemma whether he should save the mother or the child and uh, let's see uh, who was herself in a desperate state the dilemma was so urgent he did not solve it consciously so this kind of moral uh, conflict it was uh, you know so urgent that he did not have to think about it it was uh, it uh, the decision which he took it it, it came out you know it uh, it was taken uh, you can say in, uh, without even uh, actually thinking blindly instinctively he gave the child to the nurse and turned his attention to suzanne morgan who now lay collapsed almost pulseless and not yet out of the ether ether is the uh, anesthesia only upon her side so very uh, instinctively or very naturally he handed over that uh, still born child to the nurse and he turned gave all attention to the mother whose pulse was falling second after second okay and she was not yet out of the ether even anesthesia's effect was not yet over uh, her ebbing strength so his haste was desperate 
so at this time you know the doctors the way the doctor was you know working to revive mother that was desperate so he started working like a mad person a frantic race against her ebbing strength so he started acting uh, almost like a mad person to to revive the mother otherwise the strength of the mother was going down it took him only an instant to smash a glass ampule and inject the medicine so within a second he he broke the glass ampule and gave the medicine uh, injection to the mother children point over here is to be noted is that when the right time comes when you don't have time then sometimes something which is to be done in 2 minutes you have to do in 2 seconds and uh, that uh, that kind of uh, you know uh, speed that kind of you know you know uh, the way he was working like a frantic those frantic efforts require presence of mind it's your will power only which makes you do this kind of thing uh, in such frantic efforts so his haste was a desperate okay a frantic race against her ebbing strength it took him only an instant to smash a glass ampule and inject the medicine then he flung down the hypodermic syringe and worked unsparingly to restore the flaccid woman flaccid is weak so uh, frantically you know he uh, he picked up the hypodermic syringe and he uh, and he started working to make the woman revive and after a few moments after a few minutes of feverish effort feverish means like mad person so after you know frantic efforts to save the mother her heart strengthened so within a few minutes the woman's heart strengthened and he saw that he might safely leave her he swung around in his in his shirt sleeves his hair sticking to his damp brow so when he was uh, working frantically to save that woman or the mother at the time uh, his you know uh, he was like sweating profusely though it was a uh, winter season it was actually very cold but even in that season if he was sweating profusely it means that uh, you can imagine like how hard he was trying to make the mother and child get revived where's the child the midwife made a frightened gesture she had placed it beneath the bed so where is the child after making the woman after he saw that the woman the mother was like now safe then he wanted the child so where is the child the midwife who you know made a frightened gesture why did she make a frightened gesture because uh, uh, the child the doctor was asking for that child she had considered to be dead and kept under the bed that was so horrible she had placed it beneath the bed in a flash and you knelt down so it's not that he asked her like give me the baby so he in a flash like a less less than a second only so in a flash he knelt down fishing me searching amongst the sodden newspapers below the bed so he started searching the baby from amongst the sodden newspapers he pulled out the child a boy perfectly formed the limb warm body was white and soft as terror the cord hastily slashed lay like a broken stem the skin was of a lovely texture smooth and tender the head lolled on the thin neck the limb seemed boneless so this kind of description shows this is a description of the baby so number 1 it was a fully formed perfectly formed child perfectly formed means like all parts of the body of the child were intact then uh, the limp warm body was and secondly it was a warm body with white soft which was white and soft okay the child was perfectly formed with white and soft body the cord of the child had been you know uh, hurriedly broken because the nurse thought like it was a dead child so so the stem uh, that very cord you know it was like it was like not uh, sophisticatedly broken it was hastily slashed and it lay like a broken stem the skin was of a lovely texture smooth and tender so the skin of the child was of lovely texture and it was very smooth and soft the head lolled on the thin neck 
so the head lolled means the head you know it fell upon one side the head was falling on one side of the neck you know uh, why was the head lolling to one side because it was a dead it was not a, it was not a, a live it was not a, a live child it was a still born child and the limbs also seemed boneless still kneeling why was he kneeling because he had made his effort to he had knelt to uh, take the child out and when he picked up the child he was still kneeling he forgot to get up even he was so engrossed and he was stared at the child with a haggard frown the whiteness meant only one thing asphyxia pallida and his mind unnaturally tense raced back to a case he once had seen in the samaritan to the treatment that had been used instantly he was on his feet so he even forgot to get up when he uh, had held the baby in his hand and the kind of condition the child had the kind the way the uh, skin of the child had become white that meant one thing that the child had undergone lack of oxygen and the carbon dioxide had got uh, you know enthused into his uh, uh, lungs so the child had inhaled carbon dioxide in excess and he was suffocated so that's why the child got uh, suffocated and was still born you can say so he was able to make out the reason like why is a child still born and then he also got re recalled an incident which happened in uh, smaritan where uh, this kind of incident this kind of case was uh, tackled in a particular way so he remembered that uh, treatment so the moment he got the cause the same moment he got to know like what he had to do and that very second he got up he was on his feet so here on his feet means that he was set on action get me hot water and cold water he threw out to the nurse and uh, basins too quick quick so he ordered the nurse like he wanted hot cold water and secondly he wanted the basins too but doctor she faltered her eyes on the pallid body of the child but the nurse because nurse thought nurse was 100% sure that it was a dead child and uh, it is against moral ethics it is against uh, you know uh, ethics that you tamper with the dead body of somebody maybe the child so the nurse you know she uh, pleaded that it was a dead child so it should not be tampered so quick he shouted so he didn't want to listen to any other thing he just ordered her like be quick snatching a blanket he laid the child upon it and began the special method of respiration so what first thing he did first of all he uh, made that made the child lie upon the blanket and gave it respiration with a special method the basins arrived the you the big iron kettle so these things all came frantically the frantically he splashed cold water into one basin into the other he mixed water as hot as his hand could bear so he put water in two basins one was cold water and the other was just lukewarm water then like some crazy juggler juggler you must be knowing the, that magician the one who plays uh, tricks like uh, thereby uh, popping up that ball in one hand to another so then like just like a crazy juggler he hurried the child between the two now plunging uh, it into the icy and then plunging it into the steaming bath so what he did he started dipping the child alternately first in uh, cold water then in hot water cold water hot water so he did this action like a crazy juggler like very fast 15 minutes passed so you can imagine so putting the baby first in cold water then in hot water so this he did continuously for 15 minutes sweat was now running into andrew's eyes so he was uh, like his forehead was already sweating and now that sweat started going into his eyes also blinding him one of his sleeves hung down dripping so even one of his sleeves the sleeves of the shirt also started dripping with water so his breath came pantingly what is pantingly very fast he was breathing very fast because he was like exerting himself physically his exertion was too much that made him breathe fast so he was breathing fast but no breath came from the lax body of the child 
but the irony was that the child from whom he was uh, the the child whom he wanted to breathe was not at all breathing a desperate sense of defeat pressed on him so he started feeling that uh, there is no result of his efforts a raging hopelessness he started getting hopeless also he felt the midwife watching him in a stark consternation while they were pressed back against the wall where she had all the time remained her hand pressed to her throat uttering no sound her eyes burning upon him was a old woman so see now number one he is doing his best at the same time he had two other pressures one was the pressure of that midwife the one who did not want him to do what he was doing he she already told him that it was a stillborn child and should not tamper with the dead body right so she, though she wanted to shriek she wanted to cry but she had covered her mouth with her hands so that she would not utter a single word otherwise she was like uh, she was feeling uh, terrific at what the doctor was doing the midwife could not tolerate what the doctor was doing so one was uh, one pressure upon the doctor was that the midwife who didn't want him to do what he was doing and then his efforts were not giving any result and third what was the another pressure another pressure was of the mother of susan morgan that is the uh, that is joe morgan's uh, mother in law so there was a pressure of that uh, woman also the one who had great expectations from this doctor see the now what is more important for the doctor for a doctor it's not his self esteem which is more important for a doctor it is also very important like uh, uh, how well he does as a doctor because he is so many people have faith upon him so he remembered her longing for a grandchild he remembered that this woman wanted a grand grandchild very badly as great as had been her daughter this longing for the child all dashed away now futile beyond remedy so he remembered that the whole family wanted the child very badly even uh, susan morgan wanted the child even this grandmother wants a child and now he thought like all the hopes all desires all hopes are dashed away now means all the hopes have been dashed to ground is they have all been wasted so the floor was now a draggled mess so on the floor there was it was all messy now in the beginning we read out that it was a poorly furnished but a very clean room but now that very room had become very untidy stumbling over a sopping towel andrew almost dropped the child which was now wet and slippery in his hands like a strange white fish so what was the slippery in his hands the child was slippery in his hands like a strange white fish andrew did not heed her for mercy say doctor whimpered the midwife it's still born so the nurse again the midwife again reminded him that doctor please stop doing whatever you're doing because it's a still born child andrew did not heed her so do so that is also what we can learn from this lesson like let's not get pressurized with the negative people around us let us do just what we have to do okay what our duty is let us be positive in our approach and let's not give any heed to the people those who are spreading negativity around us so he did not heed her beaten means defeated despairing this uh, beaten disappearing having labored in vain for half an hour the he still persisted in one last effort so half an hour had elapsed since he had been trying his level best to make the child revive so after half an hour he felt like giving one more effort last effort rubbing the child with a rough towel crushing and releasing the little chest with both his hands trying to get breath into that limp body so what did he do in the last in the last he tried to rub the child with a rough towel he crushed and released the little chest with both hands so he was trying to get breath into that limp body and then uh, okay so the, this is what he was doing in the end so what he did in the end he was trying to 
get breath into that little body, thereby crushing and releasing the little chest with his both hands. So then afterwards, what do you think? What will happen? That we'll read tomorrow, okay? Or on Monday. On Monday, we'll read the last page and its question answers. Got it? Meanwhile, you people read this lesson again and let me check the attendance also. Nagpirat Jivitesh, Yashika, Aditya Joshi, Amritpal. Jivitesh and Nagpirat Singh. Okay. Well, Chirag. All of you please enter with your roll number in the beginning. 